That filing cabinet is off limits with Susan in the room. Way off. It's a copy machine. Looks almost as sharp as a knife. Hey, it's the head lab rat. Don't call us that. Where have you been, Sam? We've been trying to find you for an hour. I checked in the lobby, and your name wasn't in the register. Oh, damn. It's the Sam thing. They always have me listed as a boy. I thought of that. There are no Everett's at St. Edmund Hall, and I thought you said... After the divorce, I went to my mother's name. Then I changed my mind again. Why don't I just give you my cell phone number? Cool, I'll take it. That will give me a grand total of three on my contact list. 555-7866. 557-2496. Got that, got that one. Got it. Did you get mine? 555-2234. I don't... I don't have one. I don't get a lot of calls. Yes, well, how can you, darling? Well, you don't have a phone. Can we get back to the point? Did you read Ox Stew today? About what happened at the track? Maybe Styles has some kind of secret power generator hooked up to our brains. I mean, did you get a look at him? He's like a refugee from a Dark Shadows convention. He is not. He is not. You have to admit it's bizarre. And my legs are actually sore today. As if I really did run last night. Now that you mention it. Yeah, mine too. Really? Let me see. The truth is, we don't know what Styles is doing. He could be capable of anything. Unless you know Sam. You do know him well, right? Yes. You got us all into this. You wouldn't have recruited us unless you trusted the man. Hmm? Of course. I've known Dr. Styles for, sheesh, a while now. I'm sure this whole thing is just a coincidence. But if it'll make you feel better, I'll do some checking around before we go back tonight. Well, as long as you're volunteering. Uh, try the library. I hear they have books there and stuff. Shall we meet back here? What time? Noon? I'll let you know what I find out. Don't let us down, Samantha. Bye, Sam. Bye, Charles. Damn! You need a student ID to use the library. Whatever happened to freedom of information? It's a paper shredder. Probably some famous graduates. I'm not getting into the library without a student ID. Guess it's time to scare one up. What are you doing? Why don't you come inside? I didn't expect to find you in the library. How hard can art history be? Hard enough. But if you want to know why I'm here, Charles Ettington. Well, good luck with the stocking. I left my ID in my room. Can I swipe yours? No, you'll get me expelled, goth girl. Besides, walking is good exercise. Come on! Just one swipe. I'll do it so no one can see. No! I had to go twice to get a decent picture on my ID. I'm not going to risk getting it confiscated. You can do that? Get your ID redone? I told them I lost it. What can they say? I had no choice. The picture was hideous. That bad, huh? Hard to believe. Do you still have the old ID? Let me see. It's awful. Let me see. The second one is much better. Don't you agree? Well, I think the new one is much better. God! 
I didn't think it was that hideous. I'll burn it when I get back to my room. I could use this illusion to trick Helena out of her ID, but I need to get a noisemaker first. Good day, Miss Everett. Hi. I was going to buy a few things today, for my nephew. He's just starting out. Your nephew has good taste. I still find those items useful myself. Take what you need and pay me on the way out. Thanks. I picked up a few things. I need to pay you before I go. I know what you took. Twelve pounds, please. Neat trick, that one. Merely a shopkeeper's necessity, Miss Everett. Enjoy your day. Thanks. I will. could use that trick, but I need to place something in the environment first. There. I actually like the first photo better. It's the way you were sitting. You're hallucinating. Show me. No, it was a trick at the light. The first one really is awful. God. Ooh. You're right. You should burn it. In fact, why did you do that? You said you were going to burn it. I'm sorry. Did you want it? So kind of you to spare me all that tedious labor. God, you're a freak. And I thought I was bad. Stacks of blank paper. I don't need any right now, but it's nice to know Oxford is generous with office supplies. If I had to search through all this, I'd never see daylight again. There must be a way to look up something specific. Hi. How may I be of service? Where can I find information about the professors here at Oxford? Ah, that depends. To whom do you refer? Dr. David Stiles, Neurobiology. Hmm.
start with the library catalogue, you can access it on the computers over there. That's the article I got from David's filing cabinet. Dr. David Stiles and his wife Laura Edmondthorpe Stiles left a fundraising dinner in Oxford last evening and were driving home when, when their car was hit broadside. According to eyewitnesses, the second vehicle was hurtling down a crossroad at a tremendous speed. It ran a give way sign and plunged into... Laura Stiles was pronounced dead on the scene and David Stiles was rushed... Samantha, please. They're not coming home. They're not coming home. They're not coming home. Come on, kid. Time to go. 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 Red Hill House, this is Sam speaking. Oh, um, no, that's okay. You don't need to send anyone else over. Dr. Stiles no longer needs an assistant. I mean, he's already hired someone else. No, not a student. Um, it turned out a family member was available. A niece. So you can just close out that request. Yes, I am sure. All right? Thank you. I am so going to get busted. Mrs. Dalton might have answered that. God, I really should fess up. I can't. They'd hit the eject button in 10 seconds flat. Better give it some more time and show what I can do. That's not something you'd want to run into while stumbling upstairs in the dark. Look at that statue of a veiled woman. I have no idea what it's supposed to mean, but it's sinister as hell. I love it. Oh, hello, Sam. Can I get you anything? Not right now, thanks. I... 
I just found out what happened to Laura. Everyone knows about the tragedy. Well, I'm new to Oxford, and I didn't know. I'm really sorry. You didn't ask him, did you? I hope to heaven, Samantha, that you weren't asking them painful questions. No. No. Well, don't. Poor man doesn't need to be reminded. Not that he isn't every day of his blinking life. But he can't stand people talking about it. That's why he won't let anyone come over here. But this house is full of reminders. Laura's pictures are everywhere. Even that calendar is still set to 2002. He won't let me change any of it. I get it. He wants to be reminded of her, for his own self. But he can't bear to hear other people talk about it, because there's no way they can possibly understand. And anything they say just seems idiotic. Maybe that's right, I don't know. In any case, I thank you to avoid the subject with him completely. Doesn't he have enough troubles on his mind already? Are you sure I can't get five minutes with Mr. Headley? I really would like to talk to him about Dr. Stiles. All right, but only because you brought me that receipt. Thank God I can get the auditor off my back. Mr. Headley, I have a Miss Everett that would like a brief word. It's about David Stiles. Send her in. In you go. Miss Everett, a pleasure to meet you. Won't you sit down? Thanks, and thanks for seeing me. I'm always happy to make time for David. I've heard from him too little of late. How is he? Um, fine. Very self-directed. Well, that's something. Are you a relative? Me? No, I'm his assistant. He just hired me. It did he? Interesting. Uh, how can I be of service, Miss Everett? Are you aware that, that Dr. Stiles is conducting an experiment right now? Of course. He had to submit a plan to the university, standard procedure. And frankly, I was happy to see him working again. Oh, that reminds me. Dr. Stiles wanted me to pick up a copy of the experiment plan he submitted. He misplaced his copy. I think, young lady, that Dr. Stiles will have to call me and ask for that himself. I'll tell him. Could you give me some background on Dr. Stiles? I don't know much about him. David Stiles was one of the brightest lights at Oxford. A truly brilliant and original thinker. He was the sort of man he was easy to envy. Wealth, a prestigious family name, good looks, a beautiful wife, effortless public success. Then there was the accident. A horrific, horrific thing. There's a poem by Robert Frost. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaps a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief, so dawn goes down to day. Nothing gold can stay. That's beautiful. I wonder... Never mind. We must be honest with each other, you and I, for David's sake. What do you wonder? It's silly. I just wondered which is worse. To have been golden, to have had all that and lost it, or never to have had it at all? Uh, not at all. Perhaps David asks himself the same question. I've heard rumors about Dr. Stiles. Students say people have disappeared during his experiments, and... Uh, stop! Don't repeat that nonsense in here, please. Sorry. Uh, no, it's only natural you would be concerned. He is your employer. There has been a lot of vicious gossip about David. But believe me, there's no truth in it. Then how did it get started? When someone is a little too successful, it inspires a lot of green-eyed spite. Should that paragon fall, let's just say there are certain people who love nothing more than to get out their knives and gather round the carcass. Of course, David hasn't helped himself any. If he insists on living like a hermit in that house, people are bound to believe the worst. 
You mentioned that certain people were jealous of Dr. Stiles and might have spread the rumors. I don't suppose you'd tell me who. It might be good for me to know in case I run into them. Uh, no, I don't think we need to discuss that. Okay. So you're convinced that Dr. Stiles poses no danger? No danger to, say, students who are participating in one of his experiments? Absolutely not. He may be on leave, but he's still a valued member of this department. I've reviewed his case personally. There's nothing physically wrong with David Stiles. It's been a pleasure, Miss Everett, but I really must get back to work. Thanks, Mr. Headley. You've been a big help. I only wish the best for David. I hope you'll treat him well and be a support. He allows so few people near him. I'll do my best. Goodbye. Bye. I want to find out who David's enemies are inside the neurobiology department. I should snoop around in David's files. I guess not everyone in the department is a fan of Dr. Stiles. At least, that's what Mr. Headley says. Hmm. Is there anyone in particular I should watch out for? Mr. Headley doesn't tolerate departmental gossip. And neither do I. Ah. Dr. Stiles asked me to get a copy of his experiment plan. The one he filed with the department? He misplaced his copy. I'm afraid Dr. Stiles will have to come by himself for something like that. Or telephone. We don't give those kind of documents out to students. But... I'll tell him. Oh, um, Mr. Headley asked if you would bring him a cup of coffee. Did he? That's odd. Mr. Headley gets his own coffee. She took the key. I need to find a way to snatch it somehow. She keeps the key to the filing cabinet in that cup. I could try to take it with sleight of hand, but she's a real hawk. This will require something a little more devious. She keeps the key to the filing cabinet in that cup. I could try to take it with sleight of hand, but she's a real hawk. This will require something a little more devious. Styles' experiment plan is probably in that filing cabinet. It would answer a lot of questions if I could get my hands on it. That key is missing. What? Yeah, see? What on earth? You didn't take it, did you? Me? Why would I want it? You have a spare, I hope. At my flat. That sucks. It even blows.
Looks almost as sharp as a knife. I need to get Susan out of the room so I can get in that filing cabinet. A medical emergency would do the trick, so to speak. But I'll need some props to pull it off. Miss Everett, lovely to see you. Thanks. Good. Now I just need something to hold it in place. Now it's ready to go. I'd like to pay before I go. Right you are. Thank you, Miss Everett. she finds this, she might return to her office too soon. Hmm. I think this first aid kit needs to disappear. Abracadabra! Wouldn't it be nice? I only need to set up the first part of the trick. Ouch! What happened? I cut myself. Ow! Do you have disinfectant or something? I'll get the first aid kit. If Susan finds this missing, she'll know I took it. I should fix that if I have time. This looks pretty legit, actually. Who knew you could get most of the benefits of exercising just from imagining it? I apologize for the delay. You'd think grown students would be above silly pranks. Really? All right, then. Let me see it. You mean, touch it? Oh, God, sorry. I'm such a baby about stuff like this. For heaven's sake, it has to be dealt with. I'll do it. It'll be better that way. Trust me. Is that a first aid kit? I'll take it to the bathroom and do it myself. Thank you so much. As you like. 
Just don't drip blood in the hall, please. Hey, excuse me. Hello, hi, you're Malik, right? You're in Dr. Styles' experiment. Shh. What do you want? What's the big secret? Nothing. I don't like everyone knowing my business. I just wanted to talk for a minute about Dr. Styles. All right, but I have class in 10 minutes, so it will have to be fast. What made you sign up for the experiment? What do you mean? I mean, like, what made you sign up for the experiment? It's not a crime. I could use the money. Since you're in the neurobiology department, you must have known Dr. Stiles before the experiment. Known of him, yes. You heard about him from people in the department? Do you have any idea who Stiles is? He is, or was, one of the most famous neurobiologists in the history of the field. I studied him in high school. So yes, I guess I know something about him. Or at least I know the man he used to be when he was a part of this department. Dr. Stiles is still a part of the department, isn't he? He had to submit an experiment plan to Mr. Headley. Or maybe technically. But everyone knows he's suffered brain damage in the accident and is no longer competent. Believe me, he's in possession of all his wits. In fact, he has a few I'd like to extract myself. Then why has he stopped teaching? Why has he not published since the accident? Um, he lost his wife? So? A wife is a wife. Stop, please. Your compassion is making me all teary-eyed. Death is a part of life. Maybe he couldn't face everyone feeling sorry for him all the time and asking about the accident over and over, and then expecting him to have completely forgotten about it in three months, and calling him crazy if he hasn't. Styles audit to to the world, to his students, to continue his work. Says who? Think what you like. What did you think of the experiment last night? Strange and surprising. Last night was strange, wasn't it? What's the point of imagining exercising? That wasn't strange. Research has shown that imagining exercising causes the brain to generate the same impulses to the muscles and the nervous system as actually exercising, providing almost the same health benefits. It's big news for healthcare, especially for disabled people. There are a lot of studies being done on the subject right now. So what was strange about the experiment? I need to get to class. Come on, you said strange. Why? Just to finally meet Dr. Stiles and that mask, that basement. It is rather dramatic. But the strangest thing was that um, despite all of that, I, I, never mind. What? He, he seemed normal. I was expecting I, I don't know what I was expecting. Yeah. Did you notice anything unusual about Styles' equipment? No. Nothing at all? It was a standard fMRI setup. A good one. It's unusual to have a system that expensive in a private home, but otherwise, it's non-invasive. Harmless, as he said. I'm late for class. I have to go. Hey, we're meeting at the St. Edmund Quad at noon. Stop by, or not. <laughs>